says our God, when a new order will be established, the day is here to affirm a new covenant. 
We call on God's steadfast love and mercy. We seek a strong and vital relationship with our God. God. God offers us joy of salvation. Our brokenness can be healed and wholeness and restored. We are open to the new and right spirit God offers. We seek guidance for our daily living. We seek a new way for people to relate to each other and to God. From talking about God to talking to God, let's join together in prayer. Oh Lord, we long to see a new day when evil is overcome and wrong cannot prevail. Lift us up and draw us to yourself as we worship in this hour. Equip us of our daily living as we seek to be true to your covenant with us. Our first hymn is number uh, 131. We gather together. of God draw us back to consider the life God offers. Let us raise our voices to God together. Pray with me. Have, Have mercy, mercy on, on us, O God, God, according to your steadfast love. We know more of our transgressions than we have been willing to admit, even to ourselves. We cannot escape them. By our actions and our neglect, we have done what is desirable in your sight. May your word help us to face the truth without ourselves. Create in us new hearts and renew our spirits. We are ready for a new life. Amen. Take a moment to take your individual petitions to God. We are children of our Creator who loves us. New life is ours. Amen. We come to a time of uh, when we lift up our joys and concerns with each other and to God. Do we have something we uh, want to do? I think we uh, have at least one um, birthday. We do. Um, she's not here today, but hopefully she's watching. But Laura Beth is 23 years old today. Wow. She's a she. Happy. 
Concern for a friend of mine who lives and lives lives in Brownwood. His name is Ed Golden. He's kin to some of the people here. Uh, but anyway, he my last report he was in a hospital in Dallas in very critical condition. And so he was somebody that I grew up with and know him well. Okay, it was Ed Golden. Ed Golden. Let's lift him up in prayer. Lord, in your mercy. I received a phone call this morning from my brother who lives in Philadelphia, not the one in Illinois. But they went to Cancun with the grandkids for spring break in the last day of vacation. My sister in law fell and broke her hip. Oh, nice. um, so they got her stable enough and flew her back to Philadelphia, and she's having surgery in the morning. Oh. I said, That'll get you to leave Philadelphia. <laughs> Well, for your, uh, for your sister. Lillian Church. Lillian, uh, Lord, in your mercy. Hear yeah. yeah, our prayers. And she does watch. She does. God's healing mercy upon you. Okay. Any others? Just an update on Selma. Um, she did her another round of chemo this weekend. They, her... She had a fever, and her blood levels had dropped again, but they've got all that um, under control. Um, she's just a, quite a little fighter, and I know the prayers that are going um, are just making a difference. For uh, Selma, Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, yeah, our prayers. Prayers. For uh, Richard Stone also, uh, he has uh, been in the hospital, in and out of the hospital a couple of times, uh, and he, I saw him this week. Uh, he's on his way up to his sons to uh, for recuperation. So when he's able to get around and take care of himself and then he, he will be back. So he, he assured me that that's supposed to be the case. So for uh, for uh, healing mercies, Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. In our prayers. Lord, we, we didn't know if you were coming, so we went in and sang happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> They asked for a recording for the Met. <laughs> so it, it was outstanding. <laughs> Any others? Let's take a moment and put ourselves in the presence of God. Loving and generous God, we come to give thanks. We give you thanks for life and for the world in which we live. We give thanks for the chance to trust and to care. We give thanks for a word from you through scripture and through the people around us. We especially thank you for Jesus who has shown us how to trust you and to care for our neighbors. We pray for those in pain. Sometimes their suffering is public and sometimes they hold it in. Give us a chance to help. We pray for our country and for the world. We are all your children, even if we don't act like it. 
May we choose your way among the many paths from which we can choose. Fill us up with your spirit so that it will spill over all during the week. We pray in Jesus' name and using his words when we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. We're going to hear now from the prophet uh, Jeremiah. You can follow along on your insert. Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34. The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and Judah. It won't be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. They broke that covenant with me, even though I was their husband, declares the Lord. No, this is the covenant that I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my instructions within them and engrave them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. They will no longer need to teach each other to say, know the Lord, because they will all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord, for I will forgive their wrongdoing and never again remember their sins. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And uh, our psalm is 51 verses 1 through 12. And the response, the words to the response is just the very last uh, part of verse 12. Sustain me with a willing spirit. It goes like this. Sustain me with a willing spirit. Everybody now. Sustain me with a willing spirit. Have mercy on me, God, according to your faithful love. Wipe away my wrongdoings according to your great compassion. Wash me completely clean of my guilt. Purify me from my sin. Because I know my wrongdoings, my sin is always right in front of me. I sin against you, you alone. I committed evil in your sight. That's why you are justified when you render your verdict. Completely correct when you issue your judgment. Yes, I was born in guilt, in sin, from the moment my mother conceived me. And yes, you want truth in the most hidden places. You teach me wisdom in the most secret sense. Purify me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and celebration again. Let the bones you crush rejoice once more. Sustain me with the wind, spirit. Hide your face from my sins. Wipe away all my guilty deeds. Create a clean heart for me, God. Put a new faithful spirit deep inside me. Please don't throw me out of your presence. Please don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. Return joy and salvation to me, and sustain me with the Holy Spirit. Sustain me with the Holy Spirit. One thing I forgot, and I was so trying to remember, with all the violence in Haiti, that's where Mark, that's our <laughs> picture, is back here on our bulletin board. 
we, we don't know if I mean if he's even surviving, but a prayer for Mark, who is the young man that we we try to help, or we do help, but living through all that horrible chaos. What's the, what's the last time we have a word from Mark? Uh, last month. Last month. All right. Mm -hmm. And they were taking the funds that we gave them for a family gift towards Christmas. At Christmas, and they were hoping to take that money to buy a little plot of land somewhere to move their house. Mm -hmm. Try to be safe. Mm -hmm. All right. So we will pray for more. The, uh, the next hymn is number 3575. Uh, there is a bottom in Galilee. I invite you to stay there. John, the 12th chapter, the 20th verse. Some Greeks were among those who came up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, and who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and made a request. Sir, we want to see Jesus. Philip told Andrew, and Andrew and Philip 
told Jesus. Jesus replied, The time has come for the human one, the Son of Man, to be glorified. I assure you that unless a grain of wheat falls to the earth and dies, it can only be a single seed. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their lives will lose them, and those who hate their lives for in this world will keep them forever. Whoever serves me will follow me, must follow me. Whatever I, uh, wherever I am, there my servant will be. My Father will honor whoever serves me. Now, and I am deeply troubled. What should I say? Father, save me from this time? No, for this reason I have come to this time. Father, glorify your name. The voice from heaven came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard and said, It's thunder. Others said, An angel spoke to him. Jesus replied, This voice wasn't for my benefit, but for yours. Now is the time for judgment of the world. Now this world's ruler will be thrown out. When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to me. He said this to show how he was going to die. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. When uh, I was a, a little boy of elementary school age, uh, I remember a man came to our house and made a presentation to my parents. Apparently, they had some interest in building a bomb shelter. You remember the bomb shelters? You remember all the things we used to do because we're afraid of nuclear attack? How we used to tell the kids, uh, get under your bed, under your uh, desk, and cover your head as if that was going to do any good. We were afraid. I didn't know about that. I knew about playing. And I thought, we're going to build a bomb shelter. Uh, it's going to be an underground playhouse. And I'm going to have a place to hide out and put toys and play and have fun. I'm sure my parents thought that uh, Corpus was on the list of places that were going to be bombed if there was an attack because of the Naval Air Station because of the port there. But to me, it was going to be fun. We didn't build it. Uh, apparently, uh, it, it's expensive to put in a bomb shelter. And my parents just decided not to do that. I wasn't aware that we had an enemy. Looking back, it seems like we always have an enemy. It's the communists or the Nazis or the Muslims or the gangs or the drug dealers. Uh, lately, it's been the media and the internet. Every so often, somebody will say, blank is trying to destroy the country. And you can just insert whatever the word, the present word, the present group is. Whoever it is, you don't like recently here to destroy the country. Every generation thinks that their generation is the worst, it's the most violent, it's the most greedy, it's the most abusive generation that's ever lived. And of course, that's not right. There have been lots of people that have been violent and greedy and abusive. But it does seem like every time we solve one problem, there's three more that pop up. Where's the hope? Do we build bomb shelters and close the door? Do we go in the woods in the wilderness and build a cabin and stock it with food and guns? Somehow, I don't think that's what Jesus would have done. I don't think that that would be loving to your neighbor. I don't think that would be trusting God. Why hasn't God done something? Why hadn't God done something already? Well, there's a couple of things I want to mention to you as a reality check. One of them is, 
We don't understand God. We don't understand the universe itself, much less the creator of the universe. God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. We don't have an insight into what God's thinking and doing. Uh, we don't understand what, what the, the mystery of the, of the divine is. We don't understand our own daily schedule. We can't understand God. The other thing is that God doesn't work on our time schedule. I'm sure Abraham and Sarah wish that God would have given them a baby a little bit younger. <laughs> and I bet the slaves in Egypt had, had wished that God would come a little, send a savior a little bit earlier before they got so rough on the, on the slaves. We don't work <laughs> on God's schedule. And now we come to the scripture to Jeremiah. The Babylonian captivity has taken place and people are wondering where the hope is, where God is. The prophets have looked at what people have done and said, it's your own fault. You didn't worship God. You didn't pay attention, trust God. You didn't love your neighbor. You didn't treat people. You, treat people. you abused people that were powerless and, and then you blamed them for their own problems. But here in the midst of this prophet comes a word of hope. There's coming a new day when my covenant with you, our relationship as, as your God and my people, will be written on the heart. You see, we have not done very well writing it in stone. When they wrote it on the commandments, the Ten Commandments, we spend a lot of time deciding which ones we're going to obey and which ones we're not, how we can change the interpretation of it so it fits what we want to do, or if we don't like it, we just ignore it. We don't do very good at keeping God's commandments. So this is going to be a new deal. It's going to be written on the heart. When it's written on the heart, it's what we want to do. It's what comes naturally. We want what God wants. We care why God cares. We trust in God. That's what the new the difference is going to be. And it's going to be a new day. We won't have to worry about people doing themselves in with their own uh, hurtful things. God's going to make it in the heart. And that's going to make all the difference in the world. Why would we trust that? Because God makes a way when things are impossible. It makes sense that God would finish what he started. That he began in the Garden of Eden and he's going to end in a close relationship walking with us once more because it's from our heart. The Greeks came seeking Jesus. They didn't know what the tradition was. They didn't know what the rules were. They didn't know who God was. But when they saw something holy, when they saw something loving, when they saw something powerful like Jesus was, they knew they wanted to be part of it, so they came seeking. For John, this is the world showing up. In my Matthew, it's the Magi coming. This is the world showing up. Not those who are already Jewish by nature, by tradition, by race, but all God's people together, not excluding anyone, not the one most honored in society, not the least honored in society, not the most obedient to God's will, not the least obedient to God's will. In fact, it says that they will wipe away all sin and your past will not be remembered. Because everybody's going to do what God wants naturally and 
God began writing on the heart. God has written on our hearts. It's not the only thing in our hearts. It's the only thing from God. And we can trust Him. We can look into what God has given us and we can know what is right. We can know what is loving. We can know what is true to God's will for us if we look inside to what God has written. That is good reading. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As we hear God's word, as we feel God's presence, we give we affirm our faith. Let's give words to that affirmation of number 881. In the back of the room, we invite you to stand up. And stand as we show the world what we stand for. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sat at the right hand of God. Father Almighty, for then she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, and the life everlasting. in the dark world. In Christ's name we pray. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday. It's the uh, coming.
coming to the end of Lent, it's which uh, is Thursday, but a week from Thursday will be Monday, Thursday service in uh, Lomita, and then the week from Friday will be uh, Good Friday here, and then uh, with the sunrise service up at the cemetery and uh, breakfast, that's what you really come for. <laughs> Uh, and then we'll have the regular church service. So, uh, also, just in case you want to write on your calendar, uh, May the 5th, I believe, is that's the Sunday in May. Our, uh, we, Lomita is having, uh, has been collecting money for a well project that we are doing in Honduras. And uh, the gentleman from Honduras is going to be here. And he's going to speak on Sunday morning at their, in, in Lomita. So uh, if you want to get a second opinion, if you want to come and hear somebody different, you can come at 11 and, uh, and hear the gentleman from Honduras. Uh, I believe that's, and, and don't forget camp meeting. That's just around the corner now. Pretty soon we're going to be complaining because it's too hot. And so uh, that'll be time for start getting ready for camp meeting for the 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th of, uh, of June. Let's go ahead and sing. I stand amazed in the 375, 371, excuse me.
We are God's people, accepted and loved. We are followers of Christ, commissioned for service. Let's sing our benediction. Thank you.